I did my second one on Kyle for changing who he was at Lakers because me, me and Kyle both actually changed from who we were at Lakers and he's actually doing his homework now instead of just blowing it off. Change for the better. Very good. You don't get to put that much. There you go, buddy. All right. Um, so for the things that we had, if Chase wants to say something. So I'm going to let him talk first because, you know, I'm long-winded. So what, what did you want to say? Oh, uh, like, even though that it was an assignment and we had to compliment all each other, I'm pretty sure that, like, some of the compliments just made someone's day. I mean, you don't know how upset they were. They could be hiding it. But with the compliment you just gave them could have just changed your whole mood for the day. So I think it's a really important exercise for us to see. Um, you need to see how other people... Preston, uh, we talked uh, a while ago about how you came here. Uh, tell me a little bit uh, about what your reaction was and when you maybe the background leading up to why you're here at the Senate High School. Uh, well, when I first got told I was coming here, I, uh, I thought that it was definitely the worst possible thing that could happen to me in my last four years of my high school. And I didn't know what to expect. I just knew that when I, uh, I was going to come here, I was just going to get myself done. I needed to get done to get caught up to the graduate to go back to where I originally went to school. And, uh, you know, I, w I came into the school with that mindset, and then with with that mindset being the goal from the start, I got all my stuff done, oh, I'm graduating or whatever, and then I came down to the point where, well, am I going back, am, am I going to do it? I said, am I going to go back to where I originally went to school, or am I going to stay here? And, you know, I, I, it took me about a day to think of it, I knew I wasn't going anywhere because of, uh, who I became originally by coming to the school with like leading service projects, uh, leading groups for little kids in places I've never even heard of in the state, and you know just uh, just just the feeling I got when uh, being around people that want you to succeed, and uh, it, it just it just makes you feel it, it makes you want to get up for school every day. It doesn't it doesn't make you want to stay home and sleep or call Hank and tell him I'm sick or anything like that, you know. Yeah. And now as a result of, of kind of a change of attitude for you, where are you going from here? Uh, well, my attitude has changed amazingly since, you know, every day I, I can see a little bit of a changing and people tell me and it's crazy, but uh, I plan on attending uh, Baker College at Cadillac after this year is over with and that, that's just kind of crazy when I, when I even say that because I was told I was never ever going to be able to graduate, especially not graduate on time and it's, it's just, uh, it, it, it's like, it, it's just a nice feeling. Do you have any uh, uh, profession or, or uh, life goals in mind at this point? Uh, yeah, I, I'd like to do something with like child development or social work, some, somewhere it's something I can do with people. I mean, I, being here, you know, talking to people and, you know, being a leader from day one, it just, uh, it, kind of, it, it kind of makes you more of a people's person coming in here. And I, I really like to thank Asad for that because I know he's like, it kind of helped me pave the way for where I want to go from the time I graduated till college. and kind of gave me the right field of interest that I want to go into, so social work and anything to do with people, really. If you had a friend that uh, was like you, okay. all right, yeah. uh, what would you tell them about Ascent? I would tell them that, uh, you know, if they're in a situation where they need credit recovery, and uh, Ascent's the way to go just from there, but, and then again, like, when I tell them that, I, uh, they just need to beware for what else they're gonna re recover other than credits like you're gonna come here and you're you're gonna end up being a whole different person within first three to four months and it's it's just crazy you, you come in here with an attitude of you, you're just gonna want to get your stuff done and hope that you'll have a chance to graduate which which you know I mean they the teachers here are tremendous they give you every every ounce of support you ask for 
they'll stay after with you. They will never snub you asking any kind of questions. Uh, don't matter how stupid the questions are sometimes either. Cause, I mean, I might have asked a few stupid questions in my day, but I mean, uh, it's, it's definitely an eye opener. Like you, you're not gonna believe the person you are at the end from the time you get here to the time you leave. And yeah, it, it's well worth it. Okay, well, just uh, when I first got here, I remember seeing Ashley, and like I remember we're sitting around in group meetings and. Like, I knew Ashley was somewhat related to me somehow, but uh, I just remember her talking and, you know, just saying all these good things and, like, what you're supposed to do. Like, she's basically telling you how you're going to succeed here. And, you know, I just somehow tuned into what she was saying and I just started following from her example when I first got here. And uh, it, it definitely helped me out a lot. And, like, I remember when I posted on Facebook that I accepted into college, she was one of the first people to comment saying that she was proud of me. and. Uh, congratulating me for doing that and it just it meant a lot to me and it, when, when someone thinks of a set like if they know anything about it they're gonna think of uh, Ashley Matt's no definitely no doubt about it like they're they're gonna hear about all the work she's doing in the community through here and all, all the other stuff she's doing. Thank you. Now we come to Ashley. Mm -hmm. Ashley, tell us your story. Okay. I went to Lakers High School and I didn't have a very good experience there. So at around February of my freshman year, I just stopped going to school because I was tired of the bully <coughs> bull bullying and I. Uh, just stopped going to school and then my brother Mike went here and a couple of my friends did too so I kind of knew all, some about it before I came. So one day um, my friend Caitlin that graduated from here last year texted me and said Ashley you're accepted into a set now and I that was a really good day. Now, when you uh, came here, did did you come because you uh, were it was suggested to you by a teacher or another friend, or did you hear about it and decide you wanted to come? How did you end up here? All right.
Um, my name is Hank Weitenburner, and I'm uh, I run the computerized uh, learning center here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just mention these two students that you're going to see or have already seen. Ashley Metz comes to us from Lakers. She's a junior. Uh, she comes here every day, leaves here and goes to work at Wendy's, sometimes working a double shift, still manages to get up every morning, comes in here with a smile on her face and she's just a bonus for us. And Preston Soper, I don't know how he does it, but he'll leave here and he'll go milk cows until 2 in the morning. He'll get up at 7.30 and take his dad to work and then he'll come here. So uh, this isn't the exception. Uh, we have other students that are quite a bit like this, but uh, we're proud of these two and we're proud of the fact that they uh, are able to bring other students along with them in other leadership roles so that when they graduate we have another group of, of leaders coming along. Uh, at the end of this year we'll have graduated over 70 kids in four years that uh, probably wouldn't have graduated had they not had this opportunity. Ralph, you got some questions? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I'm going to just remind you and, and <laughs> myself that you've had a lot of jobs I ranging know. from uh, funeral director to county commissioner to, to coach to sports uh, writer and uh, substitute teacher and now you're uh, in your 70s and are a paraprofessional at Ascent High School and this is the happiest I've ever seen you. How come? Well Ralph, I, I hope that the glare from your head and mind didn't offend anybody but uh, this is probably the most worthwhile thing that I've done in my whole life and I really mean that. Come graduation in, at the end of May when those kids come across uh, that uh, stage, it's a uh, it's a really good feeling because, <clears throat> excuse me, I know some of these kids would uh, they'd be walking the streets. Quite honestly, they'd have nowhere to go, and they come here and they graduate. Uh, we started this year, I think, with 59 kids. We've already graduated six or seven uh, because when they're done, they're done, and then they'll come back and they'll. Uh, go through the graduation ceremony at the end of May. Hank, what's your role here? My role is I, I run the computer the computer lab which is the online learning portion uh, of the education system here. We have actual teachers here teaching. Uh, my role is to correct uh, the tests and the learning that they take over the internet uh, to make sure that it gets done properly and uh, through that they're, they're able to graduate. The nice part about my role is that they can do it at home. They can work at home. Sometimes I'll sit around if the ball game isn't on and correct some of those tests right over the internet uh, for these kids. And I get up at 6.30 in the morning, I go to the internet, crack tests for an hour while I have my coffee. Uh, it just uh, it gives you a really good feeling to see them moving along. Now, speaking of moving along, you uh, everybody works sort of at their own pace, but I think there's also uh, a board uh, that sort of monitors the pace for everybody to see and everybody to keep up on. Yeah. Do uh, you think that's a help to the learning <laughs> process? Yeah, I made a I made a board down in my room. Uh, it's kind of like a football field, uh, divided into sections, and uh, it's also divided into the courses that they're taking. And as they progress, they move their name down toward the final goal. And being able to see where they are with the rest of the kids and how they're coming along kind of offers them a little bit of a challenge sometimes to uh, work a little harder, let's say. So uh, it's working out real well. Hank, I noticed there's a lot of one-on-one, uh, -on -one, so to speak, reinforcement. Uh, we saw some of that in Miranda's classroom, and I believe there are other things that you do here. Uh, is this something unusual for the school system today? It, I think it's a, it's a case of time. When you've got you know 28 kids in your class, how much time do you have? And I'm not faulting the teachers or the educational system, but it doesn't work for everybody. 
Okay, it, it just doesn't. Um, we have an extra hour in the morning. We have an extra hour in the afternoon where we can work one on one with anybody that needs any help. All they have to do is ask. And uh, some days they don't, you know, they don't need any help. Then we go home. But uh, we're more than welcome to, or more than happy to stay here and to work with them. Anything you would say to the general student population or the parental population uh, concerning a sect? It, it, it's, a, it's a different way of learning. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we have a lot of, as Ralph was saying, a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of opportunity here to catch up if you're behind. We run six terms instead of four. Uh, but when you get done here, you get the same exact diploma of any other high school in the area. It doesn't say uh, alternative education. It doesn't say anything other than you graduated with full accreditation from a high school. Hey, Kelly Durr is one of the teachers or instructors here at Ascent High School. Kelly, what do you do and why do you do it? Well, I'm the uh, math teacher here. I teach all the math classes and uh, physics classes. Um, this is my third year here. Um, and why do I do it? I like, I like working with kids and these kids aren't really much different than kids at a normal school, so um, I enjoy it. Okay. Uh, do you use any different teaching methods uh, for Ascent versus, say, as you call it, a normal school? Um, it's mostly just pacing, and I think probably the biggest thing we do differently here is our, our class sizes are a little bit smaller, so we can get more one-on-one -on -one time with the kids. Um, we're not throwing them in a room with 30 or 35 other kids and saying good luck. My biggest class is 20 kids, and so we have the opportunity to help them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Technology-wise, we kind of use a full cool deal. It's called a Mobi. Um, we can be all over the classroom and basically use your projector. So it's kind of a neat deal. Is that something unusual or, uh, or maybe just unique to this school, or is that something that's been used in um, classrooms all over now? Um, I, it's, it's getting more and more common. We, I taught at Harbor Beach for a couple years prior to being here, and it was a piece of technology I used there, and I really enjoyed it. And it's one of the first things I asked uh, Rudy when I came here. If we could purchase one, I, I think it's a cool deal because you can be anywhere in the classroom and near anyone in the classroom, keep them on task. Mm -hmm. Now, how about the, the actual uh, teaching method? Is the methodology the same here as it would be in, say, Bad X High School or Harbor Beach High School? I would say for the, for the most part, it, it's very, very similar. The thing is, you got to realize when they come in that they're all, they're all over the map as far as levels go, so you really got to make sure you're got the foundations before you get into the, the higher level things because we've got some kids that come in here that have been kind of pushed through and some of them might come in at a you know a sixth grade level for math mm -hmm. and we're expecting them to do algebra two so how do you deal with somebody that uh, has that much catch up to do we just spend we, we spend I mean a couple weeks usually at the beginning of each term and review those basic things and for some of them that, that already have it, it's, it's a good review for them, and some of them that don't have it, we're, we're just trying to basically level things out mm -hmm. and catch them up. And it seems, um, again, it's just a standard way of doing it. There's no unique teaching method you've come up with that. that it's just the, it's the personal relationships here. Mm -hmm. um, we've, I mean, we've got 60 kids in the building, so we know on a day to day basis pretty well what's going on with each kid. Versus if you go to another school in the county where there's two, three, four hundred kids, you may see that kid for an hour a day. I've got some of these kids for three or four hours during the day, so you kind of you, you build a better relationship with them. You kind of have an idea of what's going on with them, and and that's the the main thing that's different. I think is the personal relationships here. As far as the teaching methods go, that I don't teach much differently here than I did at Harbor mm -hmm. Beach. The kids aren't much different. People mm -hmm. people have a the stereotype that the kids here are just really bad kids and trouble, but the kids are not all that different. Now that's interesting you refer to that because uh, I think there is a, a perception or maybe an assumed mm -hmm. perception. Uh, what would you say about the kids that do come here? I would say the fair share of them have, have, have made their mistakes. Um, they come here with a fresh start hoping we can move past that. Um, 
but I'd say probably the large percentage of them is just they don't have the the strong adult figure in their life at home to keep them going down the right path. That's that's the main difference between what we see here and what you see at another school. And not that it doesn't go on at other schools, but here it's very, very prevalent. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, and again, going back to, I think you used the term troubled and so on, and I'm sure there are other uh, descriptions that have been used either in thinking or in conversation. Um, do you have to be a quote-unquote troubled kid to come here? Not necessarily. We've got kids for a variety of reasons. Um, I mean, some are troubled, some are kicked out of other places, some are court-ordered. We have a few of those, of course. But there are others that come here just because they fit in better socially. Um, they do better in a smaller setting. Um, some kids have been bullied, so they've been here. They're here for a variety of reasons. Um, could be a teen pregnancy, for instance, or we've had some. So it, they're here for a variety of reasons, not just because of the troublemakers and they've been kicked out of other places. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't classify them as losers or... No, I wouldn't say that, else. no. I, like I said, I, I view these kids much like I view the kids in Harbor Beach. They're the same. They're all 14 through 18 year olds and <laughs> they all do stupid things once in a while. And I'm 28 and I do stupid things once in a while. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, they're not much different. They're not troubled. I wouldn't label them as losers. Um, they just need the positive adult role models in their life is what most of them are lacking. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Miranda Johnson is a teacher here uh, at Ascend High School. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, how you ended up uh, teaching here. Yep. Okay. Um, I knew Rudy from back when I was in high school. Um, I attended, it was called Peak Alternative High School, and that was in Santa Lake County. Um, and I just went there because I was having a rough time in high school and I just needed something that was a little different. I'm a visual learner and my needs weren't being met and so um, I went to Rudy's school and started there and I loved it. We did hands-on stuff, you know, we did field trips. Um, it was exactly what I needed. So um, I graduated from there, I went on to school. Um, I been to a few different schools. Um, I started out at community college and went on and i um, proud to say I'm a U of M graduate. And then I went on to get my teaching certification and I was looking, I went to lots of different interviews and just kind of having a rough time and thought maybe I need to switch it up. So I gave Rudy a call, see what was going on. It just so happens he was in a meeting that same day with um, a bunch of the people on the board and had said, uh, he was starting a new school, wanted to know if I was in on it. I was like, oh my gosh, what a great opportunity. So him and I, um, we started this school and um, haven't looked back yet. It's been a, a really good adventure and four years in and um, never a dull moment. So it's kind of how I got involved here. Now you went to an alternative school. Yep. So you've been there, done that, I as have. you say. Yeah. Do you think that has uh, increased your ability to deal with the unique aspects of it um, from a teacher's standpoint. Right. right. I, I think that it um, has given me a different perspective um, to see, I mean, it's a very diverse population. Um, in the, you know, we have students that come for lots of different reasons, um, but to see it from when I was a student and now on the other side seeing um, kind of what Rudy was dealing with, it makes me understand um, acceptance a little a lot better um, of knowing that you know some of our students have a lot of baggage they have a lot of things that they have to endure that a lot of adults haven't had a chance or have had to experience in their life um, a lot of responsibilities you know, we have students who are um, up working all hours of the night you know on a farm or wherever it may be and they still make it to work or they still make it to school you know and um, lots of families lots of kids who just need another another chance at it so it's, uh, I would say my background in alternative ed has definitely um, given me a, a step up in this. So it really takes patience and understanding, and I think sometimes in education that's not something that um, they sure don't teach you that. It's something you have to learn as you, you go along. So. Now you went from an alternative school atmosphere for yourself as a student to U of M, right. which is probably one of the biggest uh, student populations you could have been among. 
Uh, did you have uh, any problems dealing with that sudden change? I did. And I've actually, I spent uh, a little bit of time, I spent a summer overseas um, and doing some mission work in South Korea. And I will tell you, I had more of a culture shock going to U of M than I did when I was overseas. Um, just because the language was different, you know. Um, I grew up in Santa Lac County. Um, my vocabulary wasn't as extensive. My parents weren't doctors, you know. So um, that was an interesting environment. Education-wise, um, yeah, I had to take some classes because um, I wasn't strong in English. You know, my uh, my spelling was horrible. Is that because of alternative ed? No, I probably, you know, probably a lot younger in my elementary years, you know, I probably could have used some more work. But, um, you know, I had to, I struggled, absolutely. But I don't think that that was because of alternative ed. I think it was because of what I put into it. Um, I wasn't really that into school, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. Um, school wasn't my favorite thing, which is kind of ironic that now I'm a teacher, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I did struggle, and I had to take some of those intro to, you know, whatever class before I could actually take the class. But, um, you know what, I learned to stick to it, and I finished. What, at what point did you decide you wanted to be a teacher? Oh. I don't think there's like really like a turning point that I woke up one day and said, man, I'd like education, you know, but we all have somebody in our life that stuck out. And I had a couple different teachers that um, built that relationship with me of um, not making me feel like they were authority and I had to, you know what I'm saying? They, they built a relationship and um, dare I say a friendship. Um, and so when I was thinking of a different change of my career, because I started out in the art field. Um, I was a graphic designer, um, and I became a, a parent. And so the schedule of a graphic designer is so different. You do, um, whenever your client needs work done, that's when you work. And with being a parent, put things in perspective for me that that's not the life I wanted. And so I got talking with some of those friends um, that were my, my educators and decided, you know what? I like what they are doing. You know, they seem happy, and that's what I want. I don't want to be in a job that I hate every day. You know, why go to school all that time if that's how you're going to be? So um, then I decided, you know what, I'll check it out. I like art, I like education, so um, it just seemed like a natural fit to give it a go, and yeah, it's a good fit. You, I believe, do some teaching in some of the other Bad Act schools <clears throat> as well as Ascent. Uh, yep. Do you have to use any different teaching methods here versus there? Yeah, that's a great, great question. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, talk about culture shock. It was a big culture shock for me to change um, from here, going there, because um, I teach elementary, so I do K through 3, and then I do 4 through 7 at the middle school. And just the culture is so different at the traditional schools. Um, and we're about building relationships here, you know. And um, I'm a person that my students feel comfortable coming and talk to me. And building those relationships and it's putting investments into your students. And that's not really at all how it is in the other schools. And so I had a really hard transition this year of um, working at those other schools because let's get you in, let's get you out, and, you know, it, it was more about, I wasn't able to get those kind of investments in as I have here, and um, it was a, it was a really tough change. So, so you basically had a relationship as between the buzzers or the bells, is it? Yes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm you know, I'm not being negative about that. It was um, just something I had no idea that I was going to struggle with so much, mm -hmm. of how different it is. Um, and you're kind of on your own, you know, whereas here, our staff is really close. We work really well together, you know, it's, uh, it's a really good environment all around as staff and for students, so it was uh, quite a, a learning curve for me this year of, of transitioning to that, so. Very good. Any yeah. advice to give to the folks? Um, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, I think that's the biggest thing. We have, um, we interview every student. And the biggest thing that we hear from parents and stuff is, oh, we just thought it was a place where all the druggies are. And you know, and um, especially for coming from somewhere uh, of alternative ed background, I, I wasn't a druggie, you know? And to hear that that's what people think, it's the bad kids, and 
I would just invite people, come check us out, you know, see who our kids are. They're doing amazing things. Um, and don't be scared of what you don't know. Educate yourself. Come see what, what we're about. Come be a part of what we're doing. Don't uh, just assume for the worst. So I think that would be my biggest advice. Rudy Rudolph is the administrator <laughs> here is. at Ascent School. <laughs> and Rudy, um, I understand you were a teacher, uh, the Tata teacher, before you ever got here, and uh, that you were kind of the pioneer in getting this going. Uh, why did you choose this path? Oh, uh, because I would have been an alternative ed kid if there would have been alternative ed back in the day. Um, I probably am more like these guys than kid, you know, traditional school people. Um, I haven't always been a teacher, so, you know, I haven't always been in education, so I kind of would, I would have been least likely, voted least likely to stay in education or be in education. Um, so I think there's a, a big need, and these are my people. You know, this is um, where my heart is, and um, there needs to be something for everybody. You say you weren't always in education. What did you do before this? Uh, I worked at Teen Ranch for 12 years. I uh, We were house parents and we worked with adjudicated kids and started their adventure program. And so uh, through that, uh, I had opportunity to work with some local schools, Marlette and Brown City. And um, then uh, I, st I just started working with a lot of schools. and. I had um, the ISD in Sanlac County ask if I, I had ever thought about working in a school like full time and uh, I thought that would be fun. So uh, we started a school in Sanlac County and, and um, it, you know, it, it went really well. And then I was there for, I don't know, quite a few years and went to USA for three years and then when this opened, uh, they were talking about starting another alternative here in Huron County, and uh, my heart is really at the county level, and the only thing with Ascent is we're way bigger than we ever thought we'd be. Um, so we thought we'd have probably 10, 15, 20 kids, Miranda and I, and um, it became obvious early on that we were going to be bigger than that. The need, and we underestimated the need. So. Um, we had kids falling through the cracks, and uh, they're not dumb kids. They're bright. In fact, if you IQ tested everybody, they'd be, you know, probably a lot of them test higher than a lot of kids. It would be surprising. So they're bright kids and tons of potential. Just nobody, they just need somebody to believe in them, and there needs to be something for them, and that's why we're here. Are they bright kids that are bored because they're kind of ahead of the pack, or, or what? What's why do they end up kind of standing up? I think sometimes they're the kids that will ask, "Why are we doing something?" And if you can give them an answer, they're fine with it. So sometimes it's uh, they've fallen behind you know, academically, but a lot of that has to do with home. You know, that there's issues going on at home. There's stuff that's out of their control, and they're good kids. We've got more kids that are, are just behind on credits this year than we've ever had. And um, we have had more kids step up into a leadership role. We do service projects and get out, uh, work with a couple camps in the area, and work with younger kids' school groups. So. It's crazy. These guys are all about leading and helping in the community. It's it's really cool. So, I, I mean, I feel really blessed just to be associated with them. I don't know if I answered your question, though. Well, what kind of projects do you do? Uh, we've done everything from, there was a guy that needed wood cut, so we had some guys go over and cut wood for him so he'd have heat in his house. When they went over, there wasn't any heat there. We worked with the Helping Hands here in town. We had we had some guys put a floor in the house. Um, we've I mean just just about anything you can think of that the community needed help with. Um, we've gone and worked with school groups from Flint area and Linden, 
um, kind of all over. So mm -hmm. we volunteered to, we did service projects out at Covenant Hills Camp in Otisville. Uh, and it, it can be just about anything. And the, these guys have a heart that wants to help and wants to um, do good things. And that's really what we've done. And they, they really drive what we do. So we're, I mean, just everything. We've had um, guys that have helped with cars and, you know, homes and all kinds of stuff. So just about everything. Now, I understand, too, that uh, they also do service around the, the school. Yes, we do. We don't have any janitors or custodians, so our guys keep the building clean. Um, and we have a couple of real cool partnerships with the Sunshine Kids Daycare. Our people helped uh, get the building ready and move them in. And if they need stuff, they come back and um, ask, and our guys are always willing to help. We've got friends of the library up front, and we help with that. And the baby pantry up in the other corner and so we're we help get stuff ready for them and so it's really a cool it's kind of a cool place to be because we've got some partnerships right in the building and we focus on that and um, we don't I mean what people would typically think of as alternative schools and the discipline problems and fights and police being called all the time um, we don't do that because our kids find that stuff unacceptable and it's just a cool place to be so I you know I, we we kind of we go we got the dance studio over here uh, it, down from us and um, so we've got people kind of in and out all the time and we've got here in county day treatment here so we're we have tried to get as many resources under one roof as we possibly can because sometimes our kids and parents don't know what resources are available to them so we've got uh, counseling services and uh, we can be anywhere from 30 to 40 percent homeless students and um, we've got a food program um, where we send food home with kids that um, we've got kids that sometimes we're the only place they eat in a day so we try to break down some of those barriers that might be holding them back from success a little bit. And you're doing all this and they're still getting the same uh, credit uh, levels or the level of instruction that gives them the credits that everybody else needs, correct? Right. They have to meet the same uh, curriculum as any other bad ex high school student. So sometimes it's more, I mean, we've got to do stuff outside the school day a lot of times and they understand that coming in and so uh, yeah they have to meet the same whatever the state of Michigan sets and whatever bad ex public schools set that's what our students have to meet. Can anybody enroll here? No we're not open enrollment we it's a referral process to come in if a, a local district or a court or DHS someone a referring agency um, calls us and then we have a student and the parent come in for an interview and we see if it's a good fit for them um, we know we're not going to be right for everybody um, it's a lot of responsibility being here so um, also students uh, have to be willing to try new things in different ways and that so yeah they have to be referred and then go through an interview before we bring them on board. Have you ever had anybody come in and, uh, and after a period of time, uh, maybe a short or maybe even a longer period of time, say, wait a minute, this isn't for me, I want out? Yeah, usually what they want to do is if we've had some people who will come in and who are behind on credit and then they transfer back to their home school because they want to graduate with their class. Um, we don't have we really don't have a lot of people who are just like, oh, this is stupid. And um, I'm trying to think over the years, we maybe one or two. But most of them, um, they want to come in, get caught up on credit. We've got a couple on board right now. And so we work with the homeschool on what they need, what uh, kind of schedule they need to get caught up. And then we'll work with them. And then they go back for their senior year, typically. Mm -hmm. I want to touch just briefly going back to uh, your comment about uh, some of the perceptions and the police are called and so on and so on. Uh, it's 
what would you say to the people that, that make that assumption right off the top of their head? Uh, because this assumption was made when I mentioned that we were going to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, one party said, oh yeah, those that's uh, the troubled kids, the losers, and, yeah. and so on and so on. What would you say? Uh, they need to come and visit. It's not what people think. It really isn't. And um, we are less like uh, a stereotypical alternative uh, than th they can ever imagine. Uh, we've got stuff going on, and there's regular classrooms, and, I mean, the halls are quiet. Well, except, I mean, we always have stuff going on. So sometimes it's not so quiet, but it's not a bad thing. Um, kids are busy and they're working hard, and um, it, but it is definitely not the stereotype. Um, we, it, it because really our students set the standard for what's acceptable and what's not, and they if someone I mean we about once a year we have somebody smoke in the building, and that's it because the kids just won't have it. So we don't do fights because the kids won't have it. We don't. I mean it's just. It's just a cool place to be because the kids really set the bar high, and it is, it's just not what people think. So I would encourage anybody to come in and visit us. Um, we have visitors all the time, and it's different, but in a good way.